Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the configuring Mac Verf VLAN based learning byte. All right, so here is our topology. In this topology, we have uh, five devices that are switches in our IP fabric in our data center that's spine one, spine two, leaf one, leaf three. And then we have four hosts, host one, host two, host three, and host four. And notice how host one and host three connect to leaf one, and the interface is associated with that. XE004 is host one, XE003 connects to host three, and then host two, which and host four, which connect to leaf three, XE004 connects to host two, XE003 connects to host four. And so that'll be important as we go through this, so keep that in mind. And then we do have on the topology, you can see here a uh, layer three gateway, some IRBs, IRB 10 is configured uh, with 10.1.1.254 as the virtual gateway address. And IRB 20 has 10.1.2.254 as the virtual gateway address. And that's both on leaf one and leaf three. And with this, we have the, we're using ERB, which is edge routed bridging. and the underlay and overlay BGP session stuff is all set up and that's all functioning. So we're just going to focus on Mac VRF. And so with that, I do want to point out the loopback addresses of leaf one, and leaf three. That's uh, you can see up there. It's 192.168.100.11. And for leaf three, that's 192.168.100.13. Uh, you can also see the spine loopback addresses up there, but we won't be really looking at that too much in the in this learning byte, so and I'll point things out as we go along too in the CLI. And then with the hosts, we have host one and host two. They're a part of VLAN V10, which uses VLAN ID 10. The subnet they're in is 10.1.1.0/24, and their host one is using dot one, and host two is using dot two of that subnet. And then the VNI they'll be using is 5.0.10, and then with host three and host four, they're using the VLAN uh, V10. Oh, excuse me, that's actually a mistake there. That should be, you see here is uh, I have V10 for host three, that actually should be V20, sorry about that. And uh, then we have the VNI of 5020 for both of them, and then the subnet of 10.1.2.0 slash 24. And in that subnet, host three is dot three and host four is dot four. And so keep that in mind, that's how we'll keep track of the different hosts. And so what are we trying to do here? Well, we're going to configure Mac Verf using VLAN based. And so that means that each instance has a one-to-one -one mapping with the VLAN. So we're going to have to create two Mac Verf routing instances, one for VLAN V10 and one for VLAN V20. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this going. All right, so here is Leaf 1. And uh, let's go ahead and jump to the Interfaces, we need to configure those first. And ZE or XE003 is uh, going to be a part VLAN uh, V20. And so recall that means that it is host three that's connecting to this leaf on that interface. And then XE004, unit zero, family. Ethernet switching to VLAN, this is going to be part of VLAN members or the VLAN V10. And then let's go ahead and jump to routing instances. And we're going to need to configure two separate routing instances. We'll call the first one V10 because it'll have VLAN 10. I know, very original. And uh, so let's set the instance type to uh, MacVerf. And then we need to configure the protocols and just eVPN. Now, if you weren't doing MacVerf, and you were just doing standard ERB, you would be configuring this under the main instance, right? But here, since we're doing MacVerf and we're going to separate layer two with these different MacVerfs that we're configuring, we are going to configure eVPN here. So to set the encapsulation to VXLAN and then the extended VNI list, we're going to say 5010, since that is our one VNI we are using with VLAN 10. And then we're going to set the VTEP source interface, the loopback interface. And then we need to set the service type. And we have three different options, VLAN aware, VLAN based, VLAN bundle. Here we're doing VLAN based. And then we need to set the route distinguisher. It's gonna be based off the loopback of leaf one. And then we need to set the 
target, the VRF target, the route target, that is. We're set target colon 65,000 colon one. And this is going to be unique between the different uh, VRFs, VRF uh, MacVerf 10 and MacVerf V20. That's going to be unique. And then we need to actually set the VLAN. And so VLANs V10, VLAN ID, it's going to be 10, layer 3 interface. That's going to be IRV.10, VXLAN, VNI. It's going to be 5010. And then you can see we've configured that one. And I'm going to copy and paste this to save some time. And so let's go ahead and copy and then go up one, load it in. And I think I might have grabbed a little too much there <laughs> or a little too little. Let me cancel that real quick. Oh, that's right. I need to go under V20 and then load that in. And so let's go ahead and load that in there. That's much better. System's a lot happier about that. And then so we can see what we have here. Let's replace the, the VNI of 5010 with 5020. And then under VLANs, let's rename the VLAN V10 to V20. And we'll set the VLAN ID, that is, here. 20 and the L3 interface to IRB.20. And so that looks good there. Now we need to set the interfaces. I didn't set the interface yet because I wanted to wait because I didn't want to have to remove it when I did the copy paste. And so with V20, we're going to set interface XE003. And so you can see everything looks good there. Now we need to set that for V10 as well. Uh, the interface that is, and that's going to be interface XE004. And so that is that configuration. Let's go ahead and copy this. I'm going to copy this to leaf three. Save some time doing that. We'll commit the configuration. And that's right. Okay. The route distinguisher needs to be different as well as the route target. I did say that earlier. I kind of spaced it out. So V20. And then we need to set the route distinguisher to something different. I'm going to base it off the loopback address again. We'll just set that to colon two since V10 uses colon one. And then we need to set the VRF target to something different. We'll say target colon 65001 colon one. So that's definitely different. 65001 is different than 65000. And that should actually look a lot better. Let's go ahead and commit that. And then I'll copy and paste what we have here. So let's go ahead and jump to leaf three. So here is leaf three. Let's go to routing instances. And let's load that in. And we do need to change the route distinguishers. And that's the only thing we'll need to change here. We'll base it off of the loopback address. And then basically the same thing for V20. And we also need to configure the interfaces. And XE003 going to be a part of VLAN V20. And then interface XE004 is going to be V10. And commit the configuration there. And then let's jump back to leaf one and run some verification commands. And the first command I want to show is the BGP summary. And you can see here that we have the route tables for both those routing instances, those Mac verfs, here. And you can see that it's coming from, this is spine one, this loopback address here. And spine one and spine two, they're route reflectors. And you can see the different tables here. See v10.evpn.0, v20.evpn.0. And you can see that there's different routes and a different amount of routes in the tables. There's also the BGP evpn.0 table that actually houses all the routes between the Mac verbs. And so that looks great. That's exactly what we want to see. And then the next command I want to show is the Mac verf forwarding VXLAN tunnel endpoint remote. And you can see here that we have the different VXLAN tunnels. And notice how there's two tunnels. They're both going to leaf three. But there has to be two tunnels because we have two different Mac verfs, two different route targets. And so we have the first one that is going to leave three's loop back and uses VNID 510. We see the instance here, the Mac verf instance is V10. 
And then we have the second one, same thing to leaf three, VNID 520 and V20 for the instance. You can also see the VTEP interfaces associated with that, the, those VXLAN tunnels. And so let's look at the individual interfaces, the run show, Mac, BRF, forwarding interface, look at the XE003 interface. And here you can see the XE003 interface, the VLAN member. So this is the, the VLAN we're a part of, V10, that's the name of the VLAN. The VLAN ID here under the tag field, see it's in forwarding state and it is untagged, so it is an access interface. And we do the same thing with XE004. You can see it is a part of V10, the VLAN, and VLAN ID of 10, forwarding and untagged, so it is an access interface. So the next command I want to show is the run show Mac verf forwarding Mac IP table specify instance v10. And you can see all the Mac to IP addresses that we're receiving for that instance. And uh, for example, dot one here. And notice how we're only getting dot one. We're not getting dot two. Now that might seem a little interesting. And you might say, well, where is dot two? Well, since this is eVPN, we're not going to record the information until traffic is being sent. So let's go ahead and jump to host one and actually send some traffic around. And then we'll come back and look at this command here. So here's host one. Let's go ahead and ping 10.1.1.2. You can see we can ping that host. And so let's jump back to leaf one and see what we have now in the output. And uh, ran that command again, just took a second to show up there. And you see here that we do have 10.2. And that's great. That is associated with the this uh, MAC address and it's using this VTEP interface, which means we're going through a VXLAN tunnel and we have this as the active source. This IP address is the loopback address for leaf three. So that's exactly what we want to see. And we'll see some other things like 103 is an IP address on an IRB interface for on leaf three. And I think that's the IRB 10 interface. And then we have uh, this here. You can see it's the 254. That's the virtual address. And you can see it's associated with IRB10. And then here we can see dot one. We know dot one is connected, is host one that is directly connected to leaf one. And you can see it's just the interface, the physical interface. And that lets you know it is leaf one. And so let's go ahead and jump back to host one and seeing if we can ping other devices as well. And so let's go ahead and ping 2.3, which is host three. And great, we can see that happening there. And it took a second to share the routes. And so that's why lost a packet there, not a huge deal. And then host four, no problems there. We can communicate with host four as well. So things are looking good there. That's great. And let's jump back to leaf one and we'll look at some more outputs. Let's go ahead and look at V20. And you can see here in V20 that we do have information for host three and host four. Host three, you can see is XE000, and that means it's locally connected. You can see the host or the MAC address. You can see the VTIP interface for host four. That means we need to go through a VXLAN tunnel, and you can see the active source of leaf three. And so that's great. That's exactly what we want to see there. And the next I want to look at the, let's do the run show eVPN database instance V10. And you have similar information here, a little different. You can see the IP addresses that we have here. We can see the MAC addresses, the active source, and you can see the, uh, the VNIs, which you didn't see the VNIs in the previous output. So you can correlate it with this output as well. And then with that, let's go ahead and take the MAC address for, this is gonna be host two. Now let's take this MAC address, let's copy that. And with the next command, we can do the run show route table. And we're gonna say the V10 evpn.0 table, and then we're going to specify evpn MAC address and specify that MAC address. And you can see the routes that we have for that. And so this is how we're getting to it. And we can see there's two type two routes and you can see the MAC address there as well as the IP and MAC address here. Now, if we were to do the same thing, but let's do it for V20 instead of V10, then we get a little different output. And it's nothing because it shouldn't be in there, right? Now, you notice that host one could communicate with host three and host four, which are in different VLANs. And you might ask yourself, well, how's this happen? Well, how that happens is the IRB interfaces. The host is sending the traffic to the IRB interface. That's the layer three interface. And then the layer three interface 
is able to then send the traffic elsewhere. And we do have those uh, IRB interfaces that are part of those VLANs. And so that's how that's happening. That's how that communication does happen. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure and verify a VLAN-based service type with Mac VRF in a data center. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.